We have section one complete. Are you ready to move on to section two? Hi everyone, Kristen Som here, and we have section one of Oh So Delightful, So Happy Quilt completed already. Isn't it so pretty? I loved seeing all of you finishing up your section one and posting pictures. That is so fun. I absolutely love it. So we're going to start with section two today, and it's actually, this one's going to be pretty interesting. I'm kind of excited about this. I was taking a look at it, and the next two blocks are both small blocks, so I'm going to join them in one hooping but I'm not going to join them. So it's going to be a little bit interesting. You're going to have to put your thinking caps on. And um, even if you do these in individual hoopings, which you absolutely can, but still take note, you will want to move the quilting on the flying geese. That's super important. All right. So we'll talk more about that. But even if you do them individually, make sure to move that. And I'm going to go over all of it and I'm going to show you a different way of doing things. So let's talk about what we need. So the first one today is the pin cushion block. It's on page 12 of our booklet. And let's see what we need here. I didn't open up my booklet. Let me grab that real quick here. So page 12, so I can give you all the sizes. All right, so the pin cushion block. We are going to start with our main fabric. So notice the, the velveteen, it's, just, it's messy, right? I get little dots everywhere on all my stuff. So just make sure to clean that off um, the main fabric because notice it can get on the back of your main fabric and it's red dots which is mostly a white fabric. So I just want to point out, make sure to clean off that velveteen before you get started, including the back, because it likes to stick on. All right, so we are going to start with our main fabric, which is mostly white with little pink geometric um, parts on it. And this one we're going to start with at eight and a half by six and a half, eight and a half by six and a half. Make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer um, because it is mostly white. We're putting red on it. You don't want any colors to bleed through and don't forget to clean off the little velveteen specks. All right. Um, so anyway, eight and a half by six and a half for our main fabric. This is for the pin cushion block. And then we have... Um, let's see, pin cushion A and pin cushion B. So pin cushion A is the fabric, and the fabric is that red. I'm calling them starbursts. So I don't know why. I, I I think they look like starbursts. So red with little white starbursts on it, and this we're going to start with that four by four, four by four for your main fab, not main fabric. Sorry, for your um, pin cushion A fabric. It's an applique piece. And then for, whoops, dropping. And then for um, pin cushion B is the velveteen. All right. And that's that messy stuff, but it, it's not messy except when it gets on other things. Look at what it's doing to my, my flexifoam. <laughs> it's just messy in the package, I should say. All right. So this does have a little bit of a pile. So you can feel to see which way you want to lay it down on your pin cushion. This side is a little bit softer going down versus this side is not. It's not as much. It's not a big deal like minky or anything, but this there is a little bit. So this one, the velveteen, we're going to start with that five by four. So sideways, five by four for your velveteen. This is for pin cushion B. It's also for the applique piece. All right. And then we have flexifoam. So our flexifoam is going to be our base. Clean off your little um, red dots from your velveteen. We're going to start with this at four and a half by four, four and a half by four for the flexifoam. And we'll start with this, I'm sure. And then we have green embroidery floss. I put mine in a baggie just so it wouldn't get lost. Um, but a little piece of green uh, floss and it's eight inches is what we want. This is what we will use to attach later the embellishments. When we finish the quilt and we um, work on our embellishments, we'll add that little strawberry. Don't add it now because it'll make it really hard to stitch in the ditch. So you want to add those type of embellishments, the buttons, the big buttons, and um, strawberries, things like that after it's done. Some people like to do it before putting on the backing, and you can, but again, just keep in mind that we are going to stitch in the ditch, and it will make it harder if you've got all these things that are going to get in the way. So that's my little 
my little bit of information. All right, and then we are going to quilt this. Sorry, I'm cleaning off my batting now. We are going to quilt this, so we want batting. Our batting is going to be seven by five, so that means our final cut size is going to be four and a half by six and a half. And this one has special cut instructions, which is interesting. I read through it and I'm not really sure why there's special cut instructions, but I think I'm not getting it only because we're going to quilt it. And when we quilt it, we don't have to deal with most of those um, special instructions. Not all, but most of them we can bypass because we've quilted it. So we would just look for our quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. But both of these files, the quilting design and the pin cushion design are going to be centered in the hoop. So that's the important thing. Sometimes when there's special um, cut instructions, it's because we've moved something and so that would be key. That would be super important. But this one, they are going to be centered in the hoop. All right. So anyway, um, batting seven by five for your batting. And we are going to quilt this using Hobby Six. Oh, I love that one. That's the one with the scissors and needles and, and spools of thread. And there's even a pin cushion. <laughs> It'll be really cute. All right. So we're going to use Hobby Six in a four by six design. Four by six of Hobby Six. And that's for the pin cushion. All right, and since a lot of you were waiting on the tutorials for Oh So Delightful because I was finishing up my April cuties, can you see it up there? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So I took a week off from working on Oh So Delightful in Red, White, and Bloom to be able to um, work on the cuties tutorials. So a lot of you have been waiting and um, I appreciate your patience. So since you've been waiting, I'm going to make you work hard. So we're going to do an extra block today. We're going to do the flying geese block also. And this is another one that is a small five by seven block. So easy to do and easy to fit into another hooping but I'm gonna do it differently. So Flying Geese, it's on page 14 of our booklet and we've got a few pieces to this. So this is a piecing project and if you know me, um, that's my favorite. I love the piecing projects, absolutely love them. They're my favorite. So I'm excited about this one. So hopefully I got my fabrics in the right order. Um, let's see, hold on. <laughs> All right, I didn't have them in order, so it's a good thing I checked. All right, so one key, key, key point. When you're doing a piecing project, it is so much easier if you put your fabrics in order before you start. Otherwise, you're going back and forth between your book or your directions or this video. If you put them all in order from the start, you just grab it, you're ready, next one. It's It just makes it literally so much easier, I promise. So I'll tell you the order. So the first one, um, well, in the booklet, they're in different order. That's why I had them out of order. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the right order instead of what it says in the book. So the first one that we are going to use is this light blue, minty blue, um, silky solid. I did back all of my flying geese parts with fusible stabilizer. That is completely optional. You do not have to do that. I like it. I like the look of it. I think it looks much crisper. And like I've always said, it makes them easier to cut. Um, but it can make it a little bit harder to get everything to lay down straight or you'll use your iron more or that clover folding pen, which I will add a link here for the clover folding pen. Um, a lot of people really like that. Um, Katie, I think Katie Mayo is the one that sent me one and it works great. You just, it's like this water solution inside of it and you just put it down when you put your fabric down you put that down on the seam and hold it for a second and it's like an easy way to finger press and have it hold so clover folding pen works really well so again piecing projects you would either um, finger press it or clover folding pen or use an iron i like to use an iron right before the last step and just to make sure everything lays flat and um, like i said i like to back mine with fusible stabilizer but totally optional so this first one the light blue minty blue silky solid in three by five and a half three so this way three by five and a half all right and then the second one is the gold silky solid and that one again three by five and a half this one is for the gold backed with fusible stabilizer if you choose three by five and a half and that is for fabric two it's goose two it's called goose because it's a um, flying geese how cute <laughs> All right, 
And then um, it's funny because right away my thought went, oh, we should put a goose on that. That would be so cute to import a goose. But I actually don't want to. I thought about personalizing this and putting like CCS on each of the flying geese. I thought that would be so cute and you could certainly do that. But I actually like the look of the quilting on this. And so I'm not going to change mine up. I'm going to change stuff up later in this project. Um, and that's totally optional. But for this, there's a couple ideas if you choose to do that. I'm going to leave it just with the quilting because I think that's pretty. All right, so this one is Goose 3. And again, three by five and a half. I backed mine with Feasible Stabilizer. You can see how much crisper it is. It just makes things lay nicely I think so three by five and a half for goose three fabric three all right and then we have our background pieces and it is the white with the teal dots on it there's also um, a white with red dots later in the project so this is the one with the teal dots and we ha have how many pieces six pieces that are three by four and a half three by four and a half for our background pieces. This is all the background pieces and we'll do this after we do the goose pieces. All right. So, oops, dropped it six by six pieces that are three by four and a half. I need to get a little table here to hold all my stuff instead of my knee. All right. Six pieces, three by four and a half for your background pieces. And we are going to quilt this. So we have our batting and our batting is going to be seven by five. So this one, similar to the pin cushion that we're doing today, um, is also, it has, it's four and a half by six and a half is our final cut size, but there's special cut instructions. So on the geese, on the flying geese, I find it easier to leave that um, trimming guide. The last step is the trimming guide. And I find it easier to leave that in rather than taking it out like a basting stitch. And I use it as a cutting guide. Since this is going to be four and a half by six and a half, you could certainly use your pop roller and you could still center it within that trimming guide because if you're not stabilizing your fabric, I've mentioned this a lot of times, if you are not stabilizing your fabric and you're, you've got that and you're using the trim guide, for this one it's a trim guide, some people use the basting stitch, if you are not stabilizing your fabric, your stitches could bring that design in. It could pull it in. It could make the entire project just a little bit smaller. And if it does that, it's not going to fit together right. All of your quilt is not going to fit together right. So um, that's why I'm a big proponent of um, stabilizing my fabric and so that's just my little tip, but this is another one with the special cut instructions, but we're really not going to need to follow it too closely because we'll use that trimming guide and our quarter inch seam allowance and it'll all work out great. So batting seven by five. All right. So then we are going to quilt this one and this is that radial lines too. And it's going to, it looks so pretty on the picture here. I think it'll be really pretty on the design, but remember super, super, super important. We're going to do all of that flying geese before we quilt but yet we're gonna bring in the quilting to be able to get our batting in. So we're going to move things around. So super important, if you are one that doesn't use Embrilliance Essentials and you bypass the tutorial for that part, just remember to move the quilting. You want the quilting on top of this project after the flying geese block is done, super important. And I'm gonna do it um, very differently because we're gonna do the pin cushion and the flying geese together. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of different ways of thinking and, and moving things around and just keeping it interesting keep learning right it's always fun so let's go ahead I'm going to bring you over to the computer because like I said I'm going to do both the blocks together in one hooping and show you how to move things around hey everyone so I'm at my computer now and I am going to show you a very different way of doing things today so um, just to keep us on our toes I'm going to open up in brilliance essentials so that's the embroidery software that I use um, if you haven't purchased embroidery software and you want to, please use my affiliate link to be able to purchase it. Um, all right, so I have, I want to point out, I've got a light pink screen here. You can change your screen, your workspace area by clicking on this preferences folder and choose whatever color you'd like. Um, right down here, it shows our hoop size. I'm on my five by seven hoop right now. I'm going to go to this preferences folder and I'm going to choose my eight by 12 hoop. Um, I think that will work well for these. So notice that it zooms in and you can either use your mouse button to zoom in or out however you'd like, or you can use this compass button and click the H to zoom in directly to the hoop that you're on. 
All right, so we are going to start by bringing in the quilting design on the pin cushion. So remember, we're going to do things differently today. Keep us on our toes. So I'm going to merge stitch file, and I it's just asking, where is this file that you want me to open? So here's my quilting bundle. I have mine on my desktop right now. And good thing, because my hard drive <coughs> failed yesterday. <laughs> so I was very thankful that my designs are on my desktop. So quilting bundle right here. Click this plus sign. And the first one we're going to use is Hobby 6 right there. And embroidery files, block by block is the technique we're using. Pez is the, um, the format that I use for my machine. But there's all these different formats depending on what machine you have. All right, so four by six is what we're looking for right there. Four by six, hobby six. Double click on that. It goes to the center. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the design. You can see it brings all five parts of the design. I'm going to click on this left arrow button. It doesn't matter whether you do left or right because you can see the pin cushions and the scissors go both ways, so it doesn't matter. Um, I want to point one thing out. If you were to use your arrow buttons to try and move this design, see how it's going through all of these right here? Um, it doesn't let you do it once you've rotated. So if you just click outside in your workspace anywhere and then click on the design again, and then you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move this up. So I'm going to bring this all the way up, making sure that I can see that black square. If I can't see that black square, then I'm over the hoop, and when I get to my machine, it'll be a problem. All right. That's the first one. I'm going to leave these as is, and I'm going to bring in the next design. So I am going to go to the Flying Geese, go to Merge Stitch File, and I am looking for, I'm going to close these up, and I'm looking for Radial Lines 2 right there, Embroidery Files, Pez is what I use for my machine, and we're looking for a 4x6 again right there. 4x6 Radial Lines 2, double click on that. It goes to the center. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to rotate it. Again, it doesn't matter whether you do left or right. I'm going to do right this time. And again, I can't use my arrow key once I've done that. It's kind of funny. So you just click outside into the workspace, click back on the stitching of the design, and then you can move it down. Now, this is really important. I want to point this out. I've actually tried this a few times already before getting it right. So I want you to learn from my mistakes. If you bring this all the way down like we usually do so that we've got a bunch of space in between the two designs, if you bring it all the way down, down, it's not going to work. Don't do it on this lower one because it's a piecing project and piecing projects go further out. The lines go further out and so you need room for that. And so it's easiest, I'm just going to line up this batting line. So remember this inner line here the orange one that goes all the way around, that's our batting placement and tack down. And the outer orange line is our placement placement and tack down of our main fabric. So I'm just using this inner one and I'm lining it up on this line here. Just using my workspace, lining it up makes it very easy, okay? That gives me all this room down here. It's a little bit more room than I need, but it's just a safer way to do it. So trust me on that. All right, now there's a few things here. So normally I go through each one. I'm gonna do them together just to keep us on our toes and do things a little bit differently. So we are on one, one right there. We're on design one and here's design two. I'm gonna click on one, one right there and then click on the color. And the first color that comes up for me is dark aqua. Remember, I'm using Filtec Glide as my preferred thread color. So your thread colors could be different. It doesn't matter as long as they match. One, one, and two, one match. It doesn't matter. All right, so the first color that comes up for me is dark aqua. I'm going to say okay. And then I'm going to jump down to two, one. We just did one, one. Now I'm going to do two, one. And I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to change it to dark aqua and say okay. And then one, two, right here up at the top. Click on the color and I'm going to change it to blaze and say okay. And then 2-2, two, two. we did 1-2, now we're on 2-2. Two, two. Click on the color and I'm going to change it to blaze because that's what we used before. All right, now I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I am going to, let's see here, before I do a color sort, I'm just closing those folders, by the way, they're not folders, closing the design files. 
So before I do a color sort or before I do really anything else, I am going to click down below and drag up so that both designs are selected. And I'm going to say control C to copy. And then I am going to go to file new page and I'm going to say control V like victory to paste. All right, remember we only um, did half of this, the color sorting, we only, or not color sort, the color changes. We did one and two and that's it. That's okay for now, I'll show you why. All right, so that is on um, Untitled 2 now. I'm gonna go back to Untitled 1. It doesn't matter which one you work on, but you wanna keep one. So I'm gonna keep this Untitled 2 just as it is. I'm gonna work on Untitled 1. And you saw that we already changed some of the colors, but not all of them, all right? So I wanna point something out. On this uh, flying, flying geese pattern, we don't need these three steps. We don't need two, three, two, four, and two, five. Not right now. We don't need two, three, and two, four at all, but two, five we, we will need later, but we don't need it right now. So that's why I didn't go further into the color sorting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click. You can do it from the right and up up or you can do it from the bottom and up oops but see that makes it move so it's a little bit easier depending on how much room you have I'm just doing it this way so two three two four and two five and I'm clicking delete on my keyboard now if you're not using in brilliance and you're not following me on this um, and you're not doing this step by step at least make sure that that two five gets done to the very last it's super important that that last step of the quilting for the flying geese goes on top of your flying geese embroidery design. So even if you don't do all these things that I'm doing, make sure that that part at least gets done. That part's really important. And don't forget, like I said, you want this higher up. Okay, so then we have the dark aqua and the blaze. We've got the blue and the orange turquoise. This is all great, perfectly done. So we, right now we have seven color steps and doesn't this look so funny? It's just a box. <laughs> we, did, we did this really just so that we've got the placement and the tack down of the batting. And all that does, you could do these absolutely separately. It doesn't matter. You can do them in separate hoopings. You can do them together in one hooping without joining, whatever works for you. But this just makes it so that we're stitching the placement of the batting together, the tack down of the batting together, laying down our batting and then tacking it down, and then we're turning it together. It just takes out those steps. We're, we're doing it all at one time. It's just easy. And why not, right? It's something new to learn. All right, so those are done. Um, so now I'm going to, you could do, if you do the color sort now, um, let me let me show you why. We're, we're not going to do a color sort now because I already tested it and then it makes it really hard to do the, the pin cushion. So just trust me for a second here. So we've got one and two. I'm going to go ahead and go to merge stitch file. And I'm going to bring in that pin cushion. All right. So I'm going to close out my quilting designs. And I go to the embroidery files right there. Pez is what I use for my machine. We're working on the So Happy Quilt. And I'm going to scroll down to the pin cushion. It's right there. The 5 by 7 pin cushion. Double click on that. It goes to the center. Now it's got these little guides here that are super helpful. I'm going to click on the um, pin cushion. It's just the pin cushion. You can see it's got all the parts of the pin cushion. And I'm going to rotate it right, right here. Okay. And then what I want to do, let me think. If I do it before, yeah, I think that'll still work. Let me just make sure. So if I close these up and I click on one, that quilting design, and then hit the control button on my keyboard to click on three and that that has just one and three selected and I go to utility align and distribute and I'm going to click center center and say apply and it just makes it so that those are together <clears throat> excuse me I'm going to close that I'm going to bring them back up because you see it brought it down I'm going to bring that back up to the top here all right so that is centered. The nice thing is if you're not doing that um, align and distribute, you can use this to center, but it's hard to center. It's not just here and here and here and here. It's also this top part. So if you got this up too high um, or down too low, you're not going to see this thread. You, having it um, do that align and distribute 
makes it a little bit easier. So if you're doing it the other way, then you would just zoom in. You can use this button here and move your um, that crosshairs around and you're just lining it up with this outer line. So see this outer line and then the other one, just move that crosshair over and see that we're just getting it on this outer line. That outer line is always our placement and tack down of our main fabric. All right, and then we're centering it. Let me show you from here, go to the center. So we're centering it with this center line, but see how this doesn't line up exactly with our um, placement and tack down of our batting. That's the hard part, is getting it lined up. Um, I'm not sure how to describe it, but this part up at the top and at the bottom. That's why I think the align and distribute does make it a little bit easier, and it makes it so that this is not in the stitching and we'll be able to see this. So if you can do it that way, it does make it easier. I tried it the other way. And, and it, you can get it close enough, but it's it works out really well to be able to do it this way. All right, so I went back to my compass button and clicked H just so that I can see my whole hoop now. Now, remember, I wanna do a, a color sort we have 20 steps right now, but we only want two to go away. So I'm not bringing in the flying geese. I don't want all of the things to join. All I want to join is that batting, the placement and tack down of the batting. So we're gonna, I tested it already and I know that it just took away two, so it worked. <laughs> so you don't have to worry. But remember, we want to have the same settings that I have. And then we'll bring in the, the um, more files after the, uh, what is it, the flying geese. All right, but for right now, I'm going to do a, a color sort. And I tried it before with before I brought the pin cushion in, but it was easier to align the pin cushion to do it um, after, or to do bring in the pin cushion before doing the color sort. So that's what I recommend. All right, so I'm going to go to, excuse my phone. I'm going to go to utility color sort and like I said we have 20 color steps sorry about that all right and then go to color sort and we only want it to take away two there we go yay <laughs> it only took me three or four times of doing this all right so this design page has been reduced by two color changes so I'm going to go to new view and now remember we've already got two um what are they tabs here we're gonna have a third one so new view brings up a third tab and I'm just gonna quickly look at the beginning of it I don't need to worry about the pin cushion because I already tested it so here we have the placement for the batting the tack down for the batting the placement of the main fabric is just on that one because we deleted it from the other and then the tack down of the main fabric and the one quilting design and then it goes into the pin cushion so that's exactly what we wanted it's perfect i'm very happy with this all right so now we need to bring in i'm just going to close that tab remember everything's all in one step now but now we want to bring in that uh, flying geese design. So go to merge stitch file, go back to your so happy quilt, and there's the flying geese. Double click on that. It goes to the center. I'm going to click on the stitching so that I just have design two. That's the flying geese. And I'm going to rotate it right, right here. And then I'm going to bring it down. So remember, we have this up high because once we do a color sort, you can't move it. So it's really important that you have this up higher. So I'm going to use my arrow key. I forgot I can't use it after I've done that rotate. So click outside in anywhere in your workspace. Click back on the flying geese design and bring it down. And now we're going to line it up with our batting line. Okay, so I'm going to move it out of the way so you can see what I did here. So see this line here? This is what we're using to line it up, but we're gonna line it up with our inner line, that placement of the um, batting, this inner one. This out, outer one is our main fabric, this inner one is our batting. So we're gonna line it up with that because that was our placement of our batting. Remember that? Okay, let's see here. All right, so again, right here, this is our line. So we wanna line it up with this inner one. I moved it around a little bit so that hopefully you can see all the way down to the placement of our batting. And then it'll line up here as well. And you can tell if you have it right, because if you lined it up on the lower one by mistake, you can see this line here. 
and you don't want to see that. You want it to be underneath this inner gray line. So all the way down, lining it up right there. All right, so that's perfect. And see, we have that rim for these extra stitches that go further out. All right, see that? Then it's not over your hoop, it's, it's good. All right. Oops, I moved it up. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, so that's all done. So remember, we're not gonna do a color sort again because we've got all those um, cyan and orange and uh, we don't wanna do a color sort. We're not gonna bother because we've already, we're, if we had more than one flying geese, we would, but we're not going to, so it's all good. So don't forget, really important now, we wanna bring in that quilting design, that first quilting design. So that is really important. So now we have to go to that untitled two, I think is where we had it, there it is. Okay, now this is important. If we click on this, the reason I brought them both in is so that this would be lined up exactly where we need it, this second one down here. But we don't need this first one, we're already done with that. So we can click delete, it keeps this one where it is. Then we're gonna open up this radial lines two and the only thing we want is this quilting design. That's all we need, so we can click on one through four and delete those and see it keeps that quilting design where we want it. That's perfect. So then we can click on the quilting design and say control C to copy it. Go back to our untitled three, there we are, and say control V and look at, it brings it right back where we need it to be. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone so lots of interesting stuff happened yesterday when I was trying to do this tutorial so I want to point out something that I figured out that was really important um, when I let me open this up here when I had this at this point yesterday, you can see in the video at 1336 that it moves after I do the color sort. And I didn't realize that and I didn't understand why um, the the quilting design didn't go exactly where I thought it should have gone. And, and I watched through the video and realized it's because it moved and I didn't realize that. Um, so I want to point this out because I've never noticed it before. So this is where we were. I redid this again today, and this is where we were um, before we brought in the flying geese design. So watch this. If I do a color sort, because right now I have the three designs. So watch. Remember, this is the important thing. Remember, we moved this box here um, to this line so that we'd have extra room for that flying geese part. And we did that specifically, but I didn't realize that it moved itself. So watch, if I go to Utility Color Sort, and we want those two changes. Here's the two color changes. So that, I was so excited. Oh, that's perfect. That's just what we, want, what we wanted. Well, watch, when I click New View, it's going to move this box down here. And we had this box here for a specific reason. So it was really important to notice that it did this. And I didn't realize what happened yesterday. So watch, New View. See how that box moved? So it's not on this line anymore, it's down here. And actually this is moved too. Everything is moved down. And I've never noticed that it does that um, before when we've done a color sort. So it's just very important since we wanted this to be in a specific spot, that caused a problem. Because then when I brought in the quilting and the flying geese, nothing lined up the way that I sh thought it should have because we specifically put this box on that line. So I figured it out and so I just wanted to point this out in case it throws you for a loop too. It's a pretty easy fix. Everything is now done in one design. Um, so we can just move it back up to where it should have been and then we shouldn't have a problem with bringing in our design. So I just used my the, um, the arrow keys on my keyboard and I moved it up and you can see all of it moved back up. All right, so now we have, if I click outside, you can see it better. We have it back on this line the way that we wanted it and this is up at the top the way that we wanted it. So now we can go back and bring in, so we're gonna start with the, um, the flying geese design, all right? So if we bring in, so I've got a bunch of windows open here because of the changes that we um, had to make. 
Um, this was that radial one, and, and like I said, we were going to um, have this be in that right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and move it down because we are going to use this. This We did this in yesterday's tutorial. It's all the same for you, but for me it's two days because my microphone died and I had to go late last night and buy a new microphone. So hopefully this is sounding a lot better. It's, it's a better microphone. So all I'm doing is I, I moved the quilting design back down to where we had moved it yesterday, where it's the batting part right there. The batting is on that line, all right, so that we can use this later. So you should already have this tab open. Your tab numbers are going to be different than mine now because of the changes, but um, I think we can still muddle through. So anyway, so we are on this one that now has one. Everything is in one design, and I've moved it back to that line that we want it to be. So now we want to bring in the, um, the flying geese design. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file and so happy quilt. And we're looking for the flying geese right there. Flying geese, double click on that. And if we click on the design, we can rotate it right. It was right. Let me look at my book. Yep, right. Okay. And then um, if we click outside of it, we talked about this yesterday. If we click outside anywhere on the workspace and then back on the design, we can use our arrow keys so that it will stay right in the center. And then we want to line up that line. And we talked about this again yesterday, and, and I'm just redoing since we had an issue. But I want to point out, so I'm moving it in the wrong space just so you can see. We're looking for this orange line here, this one and this one. I'll move the design back up so that you can see it better. So we're just lining up our flying geese within this. This is our batting line, and this is our batting line on the, on the flying geese. So we're just lining that up with this inner line here, all right, or this one. Either one, the inner of the gray lines we are using to line up. So I'm just using my arrow keys to bring it down to that batting line. And you can see that now it's covered. If we didn't have it on the right line, you'd be able to see that orange line. So we just want to have that covered. All right. There we go. Okay, so that's done. Um, now I am going to bring in that quilting design. And this was the part that I was saying, we're not going to do a color sort again, because we've got all these cyans and, and oranges and all of that. And but since we kept our quilting design in a different tab, I think yours is probably in tab two, if I recall correctly, but I'm not absolutely sure. Um, but anyway, we should have this quilting design and we've got it in the right spot. So it should line up just right and we can do an easy copy and paste. But we don't need all of these parts. So we're going to go ahead and open this. And the only part that we actually want is this, the quilting. That's all we want because we want the quilting to be on top of the um flying geese and we already did step one and step two earlier remember that plain empty box that we had that's what we had this was step one and step two we threw away step three and step four so really we've already done one and two we got rid of three and four and now we just need five this is step five one five you can see it here so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to click on the first four i clicked from the right and dragged down and we don't need those so we can go ahead and click delete on our keyboard and then we have just the quilting design and it's just the spot we want if it goes the way that we want it to cross your fingers this is how it should work this is what i was thinking yesterday i didn't realize that it was going to move when we did that color sort it threw me for a loop i thought about it all night long like what happened i set this up just right and then i realized that it moved itself it wasn't something we did so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to click on this remember we just have the quilting that's all so i'm going to say Control c to copy it and then I'm going to go back to our last one that has our pin cushion. It's got our flying geese. It's got our quilting under the pin cushion. And so far, there's no quilting on this one. It does have the batting and all of those, but all of that's in step one. So step two now is our flying geese. We're going to add in step three, which will be that quilting. And it should go exactly where it's supposed to go, but let's give it a try. So we've already done a control C copy in that um, tab. Now we're going to say, now that we're in this new tab, the last tab that has all the parts, we're going to say control V like victory to paste. And you can see it goes right on top of the flying geese. It's lined up perfectly within the batting. See this batting line here? This is, it goes a little further and it's supposed to. This is one of those, remember we've talked a lot about the, the different different quilting designs and how the, the block by block are different than the clear blue tiles. The clear blue tiles just would have quilting within this part, whereas the block by block ones go further into the seams. 
they go out into the seams and it makes it look like a seamless effort that you don't have to see all those starts and stops at the beginning or within the quilting design. So it does go further, but the actual quilting part is within our batting line. So this is exactly how we wanted it to be. Um, so now we have the three steps. We're not doing a color sort. We don't have to move our quilting. It went to where we expected it to go. Um, don't forget, so there, there were a lot of important things here. We want the quilting design on the top of the flying geese. Um, after you do a color sort, you want to do a color sort after you've done um, all of the um, first two parts and the pin cushion, and you'll have two parts that will um, group, that just the batting. That's how we wanted it. Um, but then it moves it when you do a color sort. I've never noticed that before, but it did move our design. So you have to move it back before you bring in that flying geese and before you bring in that quilting. So you can see we have plenty of room here. We can't move it now that we've done a color sort. Once you do a color sort, you can't move it because they're joined together. You can see here if you click on it, those are joined together. So we can't move it at this point. But I purposely used this line just to be able to make sure that we had enough room here and we could use it as our guide. It's easier when it's on a specific line. So that all worked out exactly perfectly um, after the many, many tries. <laughs> so hopefully for you, it will be just one try if you follow this tutorial exactly. And I'm curious to see how it works for you. Make sure to do a file save as now. So it saves stitch file as, and I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it actually in my oh so delightful embroidery designs has so happy quilt and I'm gonna say pin cushion I can spell pin cushion I'm sitting sideways that's why sorry for the sound of my um drawer hair pin cushion and flying geese golly I'm having trouble typing <laughs> all right pin cushion flying geese quilt, whatever you would. I'm just going to leave it as pincushion flying geese. So those are merged together. That's all perfect. I'm saving it. And that is done. And I can't wait to hear how you did it. How do you like the microphone? Hopefully it's working the way that it should. It was quite a night of trying to figure out why the other one broke. But anyway, so I got a new one and I think it sounds a lot better. The other one was as it was breaking was sounding very bad. So this one should be a lot better. And now we should be ready to work on these two blocks for Oh So Delightful. So let's get started.
And my goal for Oh So Delightful is finding joy. That's my goal for this one. And on Saturday, my friend Christy came over and we chatted and we did a little bit of embroidery. She did more than I did, but a lot of just girl time. And it was just so nice. And we had a caramel apple. <laughs> I love caramel apples. Anyway, just super fun. So very, very thankful for friendship and quality time together, especially when we've had so much bad weather. It's hard to get out and, and see your friends and go hiking and do things. And so to have her come over and have a fun play day at home was just wonderful. Absolutely what my heart needed. So in the comments, tell me something joyful, even though you've got your own goal and I want to hear about your goal for sure, but I'd love to hear something that you found joyful today in your life. I'd love to hear that. And my shirt today is my favorite color is sparkle. Isn't this fun? Several people in our group did this after I posted um, where to get the design. It's from a company called Bows and Clothes. And I used embroidery vinyl. You could also use heat transfer vinyl, HTV. Uh, HTV, I think that's what it is. HVT, HTV, <laughs> heat transfer vinyl. You could also use that as long as you make sure to iron it down um, or embroidery vinyl that is washable. Either one will work fine, but it made it so that I could use all this glitter vinyl. And then I, of course I added bling and just made it fun. So I will add information under this video on where you can get the design if you decide to make a sparkle shirt. Mm -hmm. 